As a former professional hypnotist, performing in Las Vegas nightclubs and various public schools, I now expose all use of hypnosis. I will clearly show why this practice is dangerous and why it should never be used. When you hear the word hypnotherapist, you automatically think of a medical health care professional. According to Merriam-Webster Dictionary the definition of the word therapist is an individual specializing in the therapeutic medical treatment of impairment, injury, disease, or disorder. This is the reason people are naively being subjected to hypnosis in various areas of counseling. In my research as a former hypnotist, I found there are no requirements or licensing for practicing hypnosis in almost every state. Even for those who teach others hypnosis there are no requirements or state regulations. My point is, anyone can call themselves a hypnotist. We are talking about someone dealing with people's minds and ultimately their lives. In order for a barber or beautician to cut hair, they must be licensed, but for someone to play with your mind, nothing is required. I'm, I'm curious your thoughts, Dr. Dow, on, on yeah, hypnosis. I'm going to tell you my concern here. So for the public, you should know hypnotherapy is not a regulated term. Are you licensed? Are you a licensed healthcare professional? I am a hypnotherapist who is certified through uh, the AFL-CIO. They you diagnose and treat diseases. They only train licensed physicians and mental health professionals. That is it. You cannot go to the trainings if you do not have a license. There was a 2015 case of a principal who hypnotized students. Two of those students, these high school students, killed themselves. He went to a hypnosis school, but he was not licensed. One of the students he hypnotized, he was trying to inc in improve this, this young lady's test scores, and she killed herself. Dr. But Dow, isn't there a difference? I need to challenge you right now, because that principal did not recognize that that child had depression. And, and, and that's why you well, need that's, a license. That's, that's, well, that's, that's, well, but that. that. Hypnotherapy, credentials. Certified hypnotherapist, Dr. Zoe D. Katz, PhD, CHT. DAPA was issued Diplomate and Fellow Status of the Largest and Most Prestigious Professional Hypnosis Association in the World. And she is not even a person. It is a cat. This is just one, eye-popping, informative story of bogus credentialing associations who certify individuals as hypnotists. Dr. Zoe's proud owner is a well-qualified clinical psychologist, Steve K. Dubro Eichel, PhD, a BPP, who happens to have a legitimate doctoral degree and is licensed as a psychologist with diplomate status. With American Board of Professional Psychology, his CAT certification project led to his discovery that none of the lay hypnosis associations required a college or graduate degree and may not have required a high school diploma. With an online application and fee, one could become a certified hypnotherapist. Dr. Eichel was motivated to undertake this project because of the dubious credibility of hypnosis credentialing groups. Zoha's cat was credentialed by three lay hypnosis organizations, the National Guild of Hypnotists, the American Board of Hypnotherapy, and the International Medical and Dental Hypnotherapy Association. In addition, the feline was awarded a professional member status with the American Association of Professional Hypnotherapists. The final part of the project was, as Dr. Eichel states, to go for the gold which was board certification with diplomate status in the American Psychotherapy Association. The final compelling question posed by Dr. Eichel is, what value can a credential hold when it can be so easily obtained for a common household pet? I am not trying to promote regulations, but to stop this practice entirely. The evidence is clear, even a cat can be certified as a hypnotherapist. If you like my videos, please subscribe and tell others about it. Thanks for watching.